Who's excited to go to war with China? A lot of journos that won't be fighting in the war, apparently. Well, that's the vibe I got from the announcement of the Australia United Kingdom USA Defence Pact, or AUKUS, and what an auspicious time for a ramp up of Cold War anti China fervour in the media. Great news for Biden and SCOMO, both needing poll boosts, Biden needing one due to the aftermath of the USA leaving Afghanistan, and Scott Morrison due to the aftermath of him leaving work early. Jesus, it's 1 pm. Can we fly to Hawaii yet? Announcing a new military alliance. What a picture-perfect public relations opportunity. All their polling problems would be solved. Almost nothing could mess that up. Almost nothing. Thank you, Boris. And, and I want to thank uh, that fellow down under. Thank you very much, pal. Appreciate it, Mr. Prime Minister. Maybe God doesn't want us to go to war with China. In one fell swoop, Biden played into the coverage that he's senile and experiencing cognitive decline, and Scott Morrison got gifted more evidence that he's a forgettable nobody that everyone hates. He's not even worth remembering when you're announcing that he's one of the three key parties in one of the most consequential military agreements in history. So I'm very glad that clip stole a lot of limelight off the announcement. The only thing that could have made the announcement for AUKUS even better is if Johnson, Biden and ScoMo played some glam rock about bombing Beijing or some shit and... Hang on. I say we raised some AUKUS, Jack. What do you say? I say we raised some trilateral security packs, baby. Let's raise some trilateral security packs! You don't get that joke, you haven't heard the best song of all time. Go listen to it, then come back and watch this video about a trilateral security pack ostensibly designed to counter the rise of China and specifically their growing ambitions in the Indo-Pacific. As Kevin Rudd notes, the AUKUS announcement was timed strategically as part of SCOMO's pre-election agenda shift, which, holy shit, what an indictment on the Australian public if that's a winning message. Hey, instead of dying of a Chinese virus because I couldn't be f to make a phone call to get vaccines, why don't we send off young men to get shot by the Chinese instead? How good are unwinnable wars? You know why it's so obvious that it's a PR move? Because the Libs aren't tough on China, nor do they take the threat of China seriously. Or at least not seriously enough to remove a CCP associate from their own party. I have a whole video outlining just some of the stuff Scott Morrison as Treasurer ticked off on China buying or leasing from Australia. Hashtag ScoMao, keep it going. Everything from the poor to Darwin to giant agribusinesses. The only time the Libs are tough on China is when being tough presents a PR opportunity for them or a business opportunity for defence companies. But if being tough on China gets in the way of their donors making money, you can rule out any action by the Libs at all. In 2009, when Kevin Rudd was Prime Minister and his defence white paper was the first one that addressed the rise of China. You know what the Libs said? This is so mean to China, we are never going to war with them. The Liberals are foreign policy illiterate. I've read Howard's biography. I don't know how many times in it he says, I reject the foolhardy assertion that China will ever be more powerful than Morocco. It was only a few years ago, in 2014, when Tony Abbott signed the Chinese-Australia Free Trade Agreement. Now he's pretending, oh, so much has changed in the world. I'd never sign it now. What has changed is that Scott Morrison ran the worst vaccine rollout in the OECD, and now he's trying to attempt to run an election campaign on. Labor's headquarters are in Chinatown. Every time Labor gets a new leader, they meet in this restaurant. Coincidence? My fortune cookie says no. When the Labor Party says ni hao, say ni no. This is not new ground for the Libs. Kevin Rudd points out how Australia's decision to blindly follow the US into a completely botched Iraq war was informed by Howard's electoral prospects, and now this pact is no different. The first and most significant thing that AUKUS will do is allow Australia to access secret US technology to build our own fleet of nuclear subs. Notwithstanding all the risks associated with nuclear energy, because I really don't want my comment section to become another R nuclear subreddit, the reason for building them doesn't stack up. Kevin Rudd really outlines this perfectly in this article, but I'll quickly go through why. One of the reasons given to justify nuclear subs was that they're quieter than diesel subs, but here's a great rebuttal, they're not. Another one of the reasons is the interoperability between the fleets of the AUKUS countries, but again, say it with me, as Kevin Rudd points out, this is just code word for get ready for war in the Pacific. I mean, I guess nuclear subs don't have to come up for air as often, but to best that epic, 
epic argument for spending a hundred billion dollars of taxpayer money, I'm gonna have to bring out the big guns. Another Prime Minister, Paul John Keating. As the idea of nuclear subs is truly predicated on a conflict with China. What good is being able to have subs that stay underwater for longer if it's pretty dead set we're gonna lose the conflict they're in anyway? It's like telling, I don't know, Woody Allen. All right, Woody, you gotta box Floyd Mayweather, but don't worry, we'll give you a special advantage. Here, use this stick to hit him with. Gee, I don't know, maybe I should talk to my therapist about this. Paul Keating may have done a better job of explaining it. Here's his spin. If the US military, with all its might, could not beat a bunch of Taliban rebels with AK-47 rifles in pickup trucks, what chance would it have in a full-blown war against China? Not only the biggest state in the world, but the commander and occupant of the largest landmass in Asia. When it comes to conflict, particularly among great powers, land beats water every time. This is compounded by the fact that we were getting a fleet of subs from France already, and they came with the added bonus of not costing our sovereignty. Now we're getting even shitter subs than the still shit subs we were getting from the frogs. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather my aquatic defense gear coming from frogs over fatties. ScoMo didn't even think to let France know that he was cancelling a $90 billion deal. A deal that was set to be Australia's largest acquisition of defence equipment in our history. What? That along with the vaccines didn't warrant a phone call? I'm telling ya, this fella from down under is sick of making goddamn phone calls! Naturally, this really, really, really pissed off France. They recalled their ambassador and now President Macron is refusing to take Morrison's calls. Which, let's be honest, ScoMo's probably stoked about. <laughs> Four day weekend. So one of the first things that AUKUS led to was bickering and a great degradation of diplomatic relations between countries that are meant to be allied against China. I'm sure China's shaking in their boots. And just to top it off, another scary thing about this pact is the media's response feels as if we're back in the 50s. The ABC is constantly having on defence industry funded shills touting war with China as if it's both A snake oil and B inevitable. I think the media's response warrants a whole video, but for now I'm just going to read some more words from Paul Keating. Peter Harch's bi-weekly froth-mouthed articles about China and its supposed threat, along with Chris Ullman and his wicked representation of China as marauding Nazis, has constituted an important part of the climate that has allowed Morrison to now shop the country to the Americans. China does not attack other states, unlike the United States, which does attack other states. Yet the Herald and the Age have portrayed China as an aggressive power with malevolent intentions. <clears throat> How good is Paul Keating? He wrote that in the SMH, mind you. What a f***ing gangster. He thinks Australia is its own sovereign nation and is really good at insulting people. That is two qualities we'd be very lucky to see in a Prime Minister ever again. But I'll end today's video on this note. ScoMo spent his tenure as Treasurer selling our sovereignty to China, and now as Prime Minister he's selling it to the US. What a bright future ahead of us. Like and subscribe. Please share and comment below. Come in.